guilt-ridden after her son was kidnapped seven years earlier while she was high, a mother makes a deal with a nefarious character who promises to return him unharmed. A ritual must be performed involving horrific and sinister events, but if the price is paid, the promise from the beyond is kept. Let's find out if she gets what she bargained for. A woman, Cora, places a 911 call asking police to send someone to her home. She says she has to get out, but can't because it is still lurking about. Later, an officer, Allison, walks through that house, which appears to be a crime scene, but no bodies are found. There are candles, a ritualistic circle, and in the next room, a sheet drenched in a red-brown substance. Earlier, we see this woman, covered in blood, sitting on a bench at the police station. The deputy says they found her in a house, sitting alone in a room that looked like a massacre took place. They don't know who she is. The sergeant says that's Cora Lowen, her sister. Allison interviews her sister, who utters that she just wanted him, her missing son, to come home. She was told it's possible. Allison reminds her that her son, Noah, went missing seven years ago and asks whose blood is all over her. We flash back to Noah's disappearance. The trailer Cora lives in is looking as shabby as she is, and her boyfriend, Wyatt, appears to be strung out. There is a knock at the door. It's the police, so Cora hides all her illegal substance paraphernalia. An officer asks if her son is Noah Lowen and if she knows where he is. Cora says he's in his room, but when she checks, he's gone. A search party is assembled and a team canvasses the surrounding fields and woods. This goes on for days. All that is ever found is a single sneaker. Years later, Cora is in a group for those grieving over the death of their child. She has stopped using and has been sober for years. Outside, her sister waits for her. Their mother recently passed away and Cora took over the old house and still keeps a room for Noah, hoping he'd return. Allison reaches out to her, but Cora is just bitter and nasty. Are you bitter? It sounds like you're bitter. Back in the present, Allison is interviewing her sister, trying to piece together the events that led up to that morning. Cora tells her there was a man, Abel, the leader of her grief group. She describes how he came to her job and they chatted. Abel befriended her and she felt the kinship to him because his daughter's body was found only a year ago and he understands. The way Cora is speaking, like in a dream state, makes her sister think she may be back on the hell dust again. Two weeks prior, in hopelessness, she found her old kit and was contemplating using it. She hears a rapping on the door, and it's Abel. He tells her he can truly heal her. Abel tells her he can bring Noah back, alive again. He got his child back. She angrily kicks him out. Cora is narrating this whole story to her sister. Allison is confused as to what he meant, so Cora whispers that he brought his child back from the black, from wherever one goes when they die. Her sister says they found her body and the murderer confessed. Cora says go look it up on her computer. Abel's daughter now lives in Boston and she gives Allison her name. Cora says her curiosity got the better of her, so sought out Abel, asking him to tell her how. Abel says a woman found him and said there exists an ancient ritual used to have dead children returned. He says he went through all the steps and it worked. Now he wishes to let her in on the secret. With nothing more to lose, she agrees. Abel makes a list of all the things she'll need and how to prepare her house. When she is ready the next day, he offers to go through the process by her side, just as the woman did with him. Cora prepares everything as told. She visits Noah's room, remembering the game of hide-and-seek they love to play together. 
She wonders where he's hiding now. Abel guides Cora through the purification ritual. He tells her to take a salt bath, but it must be kosher sea salt. It'll cleanse her of all negativity. He yells at her, threatening to call the whole thing off when she jokingly states the afterlife staff are pretty finicky about their condiments. She promises to truly believe and to take it seriously. While in the bath, Abel instructs her on how to remove all negativity. Afterwards, she asks why he's still sad. Abel admits he has not physically seen his daughter yet. What? Is, is this a trick? Stating he must finish one important thing before being granted permission to see her. Oh, oh, now you tell me. They begin their ritual with Cora needing to be shackled to the floor. My, my, she's pretty trusting. Abel recites the incantations for hours, but nothing happens. Cora gets cold feet and demands he stops the rite, but he refuses. Suddenly, she levitates off the ground, floating in midair. She's ecstatic about this, knowing this magic works, and she will see her son very soon. Myself? I'd be halfway across town in the closest church by then. The next event is the invitation. The two sit in the consecrated circle and repeat spells to bring the dead back to the living. The house quakes, candles flicker, and there are voices. She is telling her sister at the precinct how the sun went out and daylight faded to black. It was as though a switch were pulled. Cora fears at that moment they let something evil cross over. She continues with her account of the ritual. Soon after, it is light again, and her ex-boyfriend Wyatt comes a-knockin'. Although there's a restraining order against him since Cora's been clean, he keeps coming around looking for money to fund his habit. Abel comes to the door in her defense, and Wyatt gets jealous, accusing them of being lovers. Abel approaches him, but Wyatt smacks him down and steals his money. Cora returns swinging a bat, and he insults her, saying she's the worst mother on earth. And her new boyfriend is the same, losing his child too. They deserve each other. Oh, shut up, Wyatt, you waste product. She apologizes to Abel, who states the next ceremony they must endure is called grief, and it is the most painful of them all. She is ready, so they get the artifacts that belong to Noah, and together they begin. Cora lives in her memory of when she passed out, and when little Noah tried to get her to play with him, she pushed him away. He goes outside, her mother sees him running away, but he keeps going to the playground. She chases him in her mind, but helplessly must watch the events unfold and cannot interfere. A kidnapper watches, and soon Noah is in a van. He escapes, trying to run away as Cora calls and almost reaches him. But the man grabs her son and gets away. Cora's anger manifests itself as a dark figure behind her. She is able to follow the next events and see where the kidnapper took him. A sinister being leads her down a hall where she sees Noah in a bathtub. The kidnapper kneeling beside. She tries to save him, but is grabbed by a clawed figure, who says she must obey the rules or this will be her last memory of him. She is back describing this to her sister, but Allison says it sounds as though she hallucinated it all because she's using again. But Cora insists the ritual allowed her to see what really happened after her son disappeared. Cora lashes out at her sister, stating she knows more about the crime than Allison does, even though it was her job to solve this crime. Later, the deputy shows Allison's the picture of Abel's daughter and the proof that she was found alive. It's true, she is with her mother in Boston. On the last day, Abel says the entity will show itself, and she must remember this is a barter. There will be a price to pay for getting Noah back. He won't tell her what, but warns her to stay inside the circle. The ritual begins, and this time Abel must be restrained in chains. 
Soon, he begins to act possessed and pulls all sorts of things out of his mouth. Jeez, chew your food, dude. He twists and groans. Cora runs away screaming, leaving the circle in the house. Much later, she returns and Abel looks dead. But he opens his eyes, angrily crawls after her, accusing her of ruining everything. He gets dragged away into the beyond. A figure whispers behind her, warning her to finish this rite if she hopes to revive her son. Her next task is to bring up a goat. She locks it in a room, and we don't see what happens, but hear goat screams. She draws rune symbols and enters the circle to complete the last test. Cora emerges in a field where Abel is waiting at a table. He tells her she must intake raw meat, drink blood, and this will make Noah appear. When she hesitates, he loses it. Now she realizes he's been grooming her. That's all it's been, a lie. He is frantic. His role was to pass on the curse and allow her to be possessed as he was, but now she refuses. Now he too won't get the chance to see his little girl. Cora is back in her house and has failed. Abel is gone. The entity tells her he needs a body to possess or her son will be tormented. Out of desperation, Cora invites Wyatt over, telling him she wants to be with him. When he arrives, she offers him as the vessel. However, this outrages the creature. He's like, I'm not wearing this dirty meat suit. For Wyatt's body is tainted, so it merely disregards Wyatt with frustration. Cora runs, throwing salt at the creature who chases her through the house. Something is busting through the door, and that is when Cora placed the 911 call. Time is now in the present at the police station. Her sister has got a lot of investigating to do. They clean Cora up and tell her to rest. But she is screaming that the thing is after her as a trade for Noah's life. She can't be left alone. Allison thinks she is just in withdrawal. Allison then goes to the house in search of further evidence. Cora is praying and begging the entity not to use her as a vessel. She fears it will take her body and soul, but no one believes her. While Allison walks through the house, room by room, Cora senses the creature coming for her. Lights flicker off, and as she cowers in the corner, it whispers, it will be Noah's mother now. The takeover is complete, and Cora has let the entity enter and take over her soul. Just then, Allison hears a noise in Noah's room. She opens the closet, and he's standing there, unchanged, waiting to be found. So what are your thoughts on this eerie tale? Let us know in the comments below. And if you'd like to watch more from Movie Shortens, please click on the next video or the playlist on the screen. Thanks for watching.